everyone, and welcome back to The Chronic Corner. I'm Lauren, and this episode is all about the most common GI issues that go along with dysautonomia. Now, there's a lot of them, um, so these are just, you know, a short list of everything. Just because you experience some of these or all of these doesn't necessarily mean you have dysautonomia. And if you do have dysautonomia and you have these, it doesn't mean that you don't have another comorbidity that is causing these. Um, so as always, it's important to get everything checked out and make sure that it is just dysautonomia and not another condition. So what are they? Uh, the most common ones are nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain, and acid reflux. I've had nausea really bad um, flaring up right actually when I got diagnosed for years. I couldn't eat or drink in the morning, which was horrible for my POTS. You know, I couldn't take salt pills, and at the time they only had compacted salt tablets. So imagine taking that when you're nauseous. <laughs> um, after that, I would have extreme abdominal pain after our, every time I would eat. I've had flares of diarrhea and then flares of constipa constipation. And of course, this stuff is very personal. No one likes talking about GI issues, but at the end of the day, it's very real and it's something that we kind of all deal with and it's important to talk about. And bloating. Bloating, it can be super embarrassing. You know, I've had friends who are chronically ill who people will mistake them for being pregnant because they're so bloated and their stomach is so um, descended after they eat. And it, you know, it can be difficult, especially if you're out and about or you're on a date or whatever and you have a very bloated stomach. It can be really self-conscious for a lot of people. And it's important to know that there's a lot of comorbidities that can be causing these symptoms and it's important to have those checked out to make sure you don't have them. So for example, if you're experiencing um, constipation, diarrhea, and abdominal pain, you could be having irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, um, or, you know, another condition altogether. If you're having bloating and abdominal pain, you could have gastroparesis. You know, if you're having acid reflux, you could have GERD. I recently was diagnosed with GERD. Um, and a lot of times for all of these symptoms and conditions, what doctors will recommend is different medications to try, which often don't help, and diet change. Now, I've done the whole gluten-free, corn-free, soy-free, sugar-free, dairy-free. There's a bunch of different items that you can rule out that are very common triggers for people when it comes to GI issues. It's a good place to start, especially if you're not super eager to go on a medication. But know that everyone's body is different, and just because it worked for one person doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. For me, um, with GERD, you know, I cut out acidic food. I cut out fatty foods or anything, you know, really heavy. I've done super strict elimination diets and it really hasn't helped. Um, and I've tried medication. So it's just because it works for someone else. Like I said, it doesn't work for you. But if you have found things that helped you, if you have these symptoms, we would absolutely love to hear from you all in the comments below. And for more things chronic illness and dysautonomia, visit dinet.org. Thank you so much for watching.